Hello everyone, thanks for giving me the opportunity to present my recent project. My name is Ali Shabgazar and I'm a PhD candidate at Idaho State University. And today I'm talking about the analysis of an innovative seismic resilient precast gear system in accelerated bridge construction method in high seismicity. Uh, and today I will mostly focus on the numerical part of the project. Uh, here you can see the outline of my project. At first, I'm talking about the background of the uh, method. Then I will uh, talk about the concept for the PCAS peer system and its advantages. And after that, I will briefly talk about the experimental results on the casting place as well as the precast cantilever peer. And then I will mostly focus on the numerical investigation and the parametric case study. And at the end, we will see the conclusion together. <clears throat> This slide provides the information of the project. As you can see, the sponsor of the project was Ida Transportation Department, and Dr. Mustafa Mashal and Dr. Arya Ibrahimpour were the PI and the co-PI of the project. And uh, Jared Cantrell, who is the lab manager at ISU, Corey Marshall, myself, Mahesh Acharya, Catherine Hogarth, and Amin Torabi were graduate students who worked on the uh, project. Let's start with the background. Uh, actually, the current design philosophy of the seismic bridge design requires the ductility concept. But does that mean that means that uh, we have to make sure that in bridges we have plastic hinge uh, uh, because uh, after the earthquake the bridge might not be functional, but it won't collapse. And if we cannot put that hinges. Uh, in the bridge to absorb the energy, seismic energy, we might end up with a brittle failure. That's what not we are looking for. But the point is that in the precast, it is really difficult to obtain the same seismic behavior uh, performance as the casting place. Why is that? Because we don't have continuous bar, and uh, and we cannot make all the components attached to each other in the precast yard and bring it to the uh, bridge site. Uh, because it's going to be huge, the transportation is impossible. Uh, imagine that we have pudding, column, and capping. Uh, so we have to bring them in pieces. And when we want to connect them, the connection between those precast components plays the key role. And uh, in this slide, I mean, the, the, over the years, a bunch of connections have been developed. And in this slide, you can see one of the um, connections. Uh, that is kind of common in Utah and Idaho, uh, which is called grass coupler. Uh, although the tests show that they do have a great and adequate seismic behavior, uh, that's not the only concern, because if there is any misalignment, uh, the seismic performance won't be an issue, but the construction will be an issue. So we might have construction issue and difficulties. And the other kind of the connection is grass post-tension dog. Uh, in this kind of connection, we have rebar coming out of one element and it goes inside the other element. Uh, and this kind of connection can be used for both seismic and non-seismic zones. Uh, but again, this kind of the connection has the tolerance issue. Sometimes it happens that they don't match to each other. And that's why it might have uh, some construction difficulties. In order to avoid these difficulties, the tolerance, transportation, and the construction issue, um, I'm proposing a competitive uh, uh, connection, which is called as a pipe connection. In this slide, you can see the detail of the pipe connection, uh, but in the middle of the slide, you can see the demonstration model of the connection. Uh, the, basically, the idea here is that, as you can see, there is a pipe filled with concrete coming out of the column. That pipe goes inside the pipe in the footing. And in the other side of the column, there is another pipe which goes inside the uh, cabin. That's the whole idea. But there is another cool thing is that if we have any limitation on the weight transportation for the tra transportation, and if we have a gigantic cabin, uh, we can have the cabin as a shell element, which is shown in the demonstration model. We can ship it to the side and pour the concrete over there and make it solid uh, in the side. So that's another cool thing. Uh, talking about the concept for the precast gear system, I mean, I'm sure that you know that there are a lot of advantages. Here is the list of advantages uh, of using this method. But in order to see how this connection works, uh, we conducted some tests. The first sample, which we used that as a benchmark, 
uh, is cast in place cantilever pier. Uh, the design of this sample meets all the requirements by the ASHTO LRFC design manual. We have 12 rebar number six and uh, the syrup number three. And here you can see the test setup as it is shown on the top of the column. Uh, there is a constant uh, vertical compressive load uh, which is applied on the top of the uh, column uh, by using the hydraulic jack. That load represents the gravity load uh, in the real life on the bridge. Uh, so, and the other thing is the horizontal actuator which applies the transfer slots for the push and pull on the top of the column and in the bottom we have a footing which is secured by uh, by using eight high strength threaded bar to the strength floor that we have at isu and in the right side you can see the loading protocol that we use as it is shown in the diagram for each drift uh, level we have two full uh, cycle of push and pull and here you can see the uh, result of the experiment. And uh, as it is shown in figures, three rebars broke in the drift of nine and 10%. And even in the force displacement and force drift diagram, you can see that there are three locations that the force is dropped. And that represents the uh, location where the rebar broke. And even in backbone curve, you can see that they are almost symmetrical in push and pull. Uh, we did the exact same test, uh, but this time with precast here by using the pipe connection. Uh, so here we chose the uh, pipe size uh, based, uh, I mean, in a way that we will have almost the same capacity as cast in place. And we did the same test, and here is the result for the uh, precast here. Uh, as you can see, in the drift of 12%, there is a uh, bottling on the bottom side of the pipe and um, even in the force displacement you can see that in the last loop there is a significant strength loss that exactly represents the bottling in the uh, pipe. Uh, after testing the precast and casting place uh, pier or column we did the test on the casting place bend and precast bend. Uh, I will show you the results later on but now I think it's a good time to move forward to the numerical investigation. Uh, for the computer modeling the open space finite element software have been used. We got some input from SAS 2000 as well. Uh, we calibrate our computer model with the uh, experimental data that we had. Uh, in open fields, we use nonlinear beam column elements, and in order to du duplicate the experimental results, uh, we use concrete 01 material for unconfined concrete, concrete 04 for confined concrete, and steel 02 for reinforcing steel. Uh, and uh, on top of that, uh, we model the section on SAP 2000 to be able to get the mechanical properties for the uh, confined concrete. Here you can see the uh, model in OpenSys. As you can see, uh, there are six nodes and five elements. Two of the elements are uh, nonlinear, and three of them are linear elastic. Element one, which can be seen on the bottom of the column, is nonlinear zero length element, which represents uh, the, the bond slip. I will talk about that in detail in the next slide. But element two, is and again nonlinear beam column element and element three, four, and five are linear elastic with high stiffness. We basically made them rigid. And the axial load, the vertical load, is applied on node five on the top of the model, and node node six, uh, the, the the transfer load, the push and pull, uh, applied in node uh, six. Uh, here you can see the uh, partial part of the code that I wrote. I mean, the whole code was over 400 lines. So here I can, I just put a uh, partial of that. Uh, now let me talk about the bond slip that I was just talking about for zero length element. Uh, the rotation due to the bond slip on the base of the column is modeled in open space by using the rotational spring. Uh, what we did, we basically modeled the section and we applied the rotation and we were able to get the a stress and a strain in the extreme
stream rebar in the tension and the compression. And by using that stress and stress strain value and using a formula suggested by Weber, we were able to get the moment rotation diagram and we were able to get those values that we need to define in uh, open source. <clears throat> Here is the SAP 2000 input that I was talking about. We modeled the section, and by using the Manders model, we were able to capture the confined concrete material properties. Uh, now let me tell you how I modeled the octagonal cross section, uh, because our section was not a simple circular section, uh, and there is no comment in open seats for octagonal. So for the confined concrete, which is uh, inside the uh, longitudinal rebar, I use the circular patch, but for the unconfined concrete, I define 96 uh, quadrilateral patches uh, that it is shown in the right side. And for the reinforcing bar, I use the circular arch layer common. Uh, so here in this slide, you see the most important slide of my presentation. Why is that? Because uh, the, one of the primary failure mechanisms in reinforced concrete column when it comes to earthquake is low cycle fatigue. So definitely we have to define low cycle fatigue in our computer modeling. Without that, there is impossible to capture the experimental data. And for doing that, we were supposed to define the appropriate parameter for coffin mass and curve. For doing that, we took advantage of the experimental data presented by Dr. Kunad and Hadile from two different research projects. We combined their results and we were able to get the values for that. And that's the value we use for the uh, computer modeling for the rebar uh, ASTM A615. Uh, by that, let me show you the results of the numerical. In the right side, uh, left side, you can see the numerical result. Again, in the numerical result, you can see that there are some locations that we have uh, the forces dropped. That's exactly where the rebar broke. And then we put them on top of each other. You can see that we were uh, we got the peak, um, uh, and it's almost the same as each other. And for the precast. We did exactly the same. The only difference is in the section. Uh, for the section of the column, we divide the column in three different zones. Zone one uh, is exactly the same as the uh, casting place. We have rebar and uh, concrete, which is shown here. For zone two is where the pipe comes to the play a role. So we have pipe, we have co uh, concrete, and we have rebar. But for zone three, which is, by the way, just two inches, but it's really important, uh, we have uh, pipe and uh, concrete. And here you can see the result of the numerical for the uh, precast with pipe connection. It is really cool that even we were able to capture the last cycle, which, uh, the peak of the last cycle, which bottling happened. Uh, but as after that, I modeled the, the precast bend as well as the casting place bend. Here you can see the result of casting place bend. Again, we were able to capture the peak for each cycle. And here is the cool thing that I was talking about, the low cycle fatigue. If I didn't uh, apply that low cycle fatigue, if I didn't define it, uh, I wouldn't be able to capture the peak because uh, the cycles would just go up. It wouldn't come down. Even in the precast, bend, you can see it better. You see that the, the cycle is getting smaller, the peaks are getting smaller as after each cycle. Uh, without the uh, low cycle fatigue, it was almost impossible. I mean, it was impossible to capture the peaks. Uh, now that we know that the computer model works, uh, we went a step further. We decided to model a real bridge in Idaho in the open seas. Uh, with two different connections, one in with cast in place connection, another time with proposed connection, which was pipe connection. And we ran two different analyzers on the bridge. One of them was pushover, another one was the dynamic or time history analysis, and we compared them together. Here you can see the plan view as well as the elevation view of the uh, real bridge in Du Bois, uh, Idaho. Uh, this bridge has two spans and four uh, piers. And here you can see the modeling open space. 
uh, you can see the nodes and the elements. Again, we have zero length elements for the bottom side, uh, bottom of the uh, piers. Uh, and here you can see the result of the pushover analysis. As you can see, both of them for casting place and peer cast, uh, both of them have almost the same yield point in the base shear. Uh, this diagram is the base shear against the displacement of node six, uh, which happened to be in the middle of the uh, bridge deck. And uh, for the nonlinear dynamic analysis or time history, four different earthquakes around the world uh, have been selected. And uh, we scaled them to the Idaho site and uh, we used the uh, the, the, the ASHTO, uh, recommended ASHTO 3 point uh, method to be able to get the design spectrum for Idaho. Uh, and here uh, is the data point that we calculated and we were able to draw the, uh, the uniform spec hazard spectrum for Idaho. Uh, in, here in the left side, we can see the typical uh, dynamic input that we had. Uh, for direction one and direction two. Uh, by the way, for each case, for example, for cast in place connection of the bridge, we ran it two times. One time, we assumed that direction y one applies longitudinal, direction two applies transverse. The second time, it was different. We assumed direction two is longitudinal and direction one is uh, transverse. So for each case, we ran it two times. Uh, and in the right side, you can see the pushover versus the dynamic response for one of the earthquakes, for Lander's earthquake. Uh, but uh, it is needless to mention that so definitely the uh, seismicity of Idaho is not as severe as, I don't know, for example, California. So that's why we don't see that much nonlinear behavior in the bridge under the uh, one of the earthquakes, for example. Uh, in this slide, you can see the summary of the information we got from the uh, computer modeling. Where, as I mentioned, we ran the program two times uh, with different directions. We got the maximum base shear and the displacement. And by using the actual requirement, which, uh, which is 100% of the larger displacement or base shear plus 30% of the smaller one, we were able to cal calculate the combination of the base shear and uh, displacement, and we could compare it with the uh, pushover uh, results. Uh, this table pre represents the data, uh, I mean, the results for the casting place bridge, and this one for the precast bridge. And uh, we, we noticed that both bridges, I mean, bridge with both connections, casting place and the uh, pre uh, pipe connection has almost the same behavior. And as a conclusion, uh, as I just talked about, we suggested a new connection, uh, which is called pipe connection. And uh, compared to an equivalent casting place here, the precast here with pipe connection achieved a higher strain and ductility. Uh, we modeled it in the open space and uh, in order to get the experimental result in the computer modeling, we have to uh, define the low cycle fatigue and the predicted site uh, hysteresis force displacement for a column in casting place and precast. And for the bend, again, casting place and uh, precast, uh, agreed with the experimental result. We got almost the same. And then we did the case study and we modeled a bridge on that with two different connections. And both bridge models had almost the same pushover uh, shear yield value. And here is some of the references and uh, publications that we had. And in this slide, I just I would love to thank uh, all people and companies who helped us uh, for on this project. And uh, thank you so much for your attention and uh, time. It was my pleasure to present my uh, research uh, for you. Thank you so much.